stories in the Old Testament are very powerful. They have profoundly affected women's self-understanding and men's perception of women. Unfortunately, over thousands of years, the sacred stories of women and men, interpreted mostly by men, have been mistranslated and misused to support patriarchal views and preferences. Amazingly, many women have accepted their lives of inferiority as part of God's will, while men have been pressured into roles of power and dominance that God never intended or required. Holy Scriptures, designed to set all people free, have become in many cases a license to enchain. Of all the stories in the world written about women and men, none is more powerful and long-lasting than the creation story of Eve and her mate Adam as presented in the Old Testament book of Genesis. This primeval story continues to shape the ways in which 21st century women think of themselves and the way the rest of the world thinks about them. The Hebrew word for man is ish. A common male interpretation, or mish interpretation, of the creation story is that a male god creates man first, which means superior, and female second, which means inferior or subordinate. There are two creation stories in Genesis. The second story of creation is found in the second chapter of Genesis, verses 4b through chapter 3, verse 24. It is the story people draw upon to claim the superiority of man and the inferiority or subordination of woman. In this very familiar story, God creates man first. God sees that man is lonely and needs a helper as his partner. So God creates the animals of the field and the birds of the air. God brings all the living creatures to the man so that he can name them. But while God is observing the naming process, God sees that these particular living creatures are unsuitable helpers for the man. So God causes a deep sleep to fall upon man, takes one of his ribs, and makes woman. That's the second story. The first story comes from the source known as P, or the priestly source, and is found in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 through chapter 2, verse 4a. This creation story shows the orderliness and goodness of God's creation. God's creation takes place over six days with God resting on the seventh day. On the sixth day of creation, after God has created all other living things, including animals and birds, God creates humankind. Unlike the second story of creation, man is not created first. God creates male and female simultaneously. Then God said, Let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in His image. In the image of God He created them, Male and female, he created them. The Hebrew word used in Genesis 1, and 1, for humankind is Adam and Ha'adam, respectively. Many English versions of this scripture, including the King James Version, New American Standard Bible, New International Version, and the New King James Version, translate Adam and Ha'adam as man. Let us make man in our image. So God created man in his image. But this translation is clearly inadequate. The Hebrew word for man, ish, does not appear in this text, and in fact does not appear in the Hebrew text until after the creation of woman in Genesis chapter 2, verse 24. Although in Genesis 1:26 the word Adam occurs without the definite article, the word is made specific in 127, where Adam is prefixed by the definite article Ha. The literal translation of Ha Adam is the human or humanity, which is inclusive of all humanity, both male and female. The inclusion of both male and female is confirmed by God's immediate use of the pronoun them. 
God gave them dominion, and God created them. Male and female, he created them. In grammatical terms, an antecedent is the word, phrase, or clause that a pronoun replaces. Adam and Ha'adam serve as antecedents for the pronoun them. Since God gave dominion equally to them and created them, male and female, simultaneously, it is impossible to conclude male authority over the female. The qualification of God creating male and female indicates that it is the species itself God created, not a gender-specific man. Verse 28 goes on to say that God blessed them and spoke to them. Further evidence of Ha'adam referring to humanity as a whole occurs in Genesis chapter 3, verse 24. After the fall and punishment for sin, God executed the immediate sentence of banishment from the Garden of Eden. God drove out Ha'adam. Adam and Eve were both obviously included in the sentence. If the term Ha'adam could be properly and exclusively applied to the male, then it could logically be argued that only the male was expelled from the garden. This is clearly not the case. Thus, ha'adam is the generic Hebrew term for human being, which consists of both male and female species. In God's image and likeness, God created one being with all the genetic coding required to produce both male and female. Perhaps the biological development of every human embryo echoes the events of the original creation of humanity. Amazingly, every human embryo has undistinguishable sex identity from the moment of conception until the sixth week of gestation. In the first weeks in the womb, the tiny fetus isn't noticeably a tiny female or male. Rather, it has all the basic equipment to develop into either sex. Just as sexual differentiation does not occur in the human fetus until the divine design initiates the process for the complete development of male or female, sexual differentiation did not occur in the first human until the divine surgery. While scripture is clear that both male and female were created simultaneously, this truth has been almost universally obscured, and in the case of many faith traditions, simply ignored. Astonishingly, many women still believe the man-made construct that woman was created as a sort of divine afterthought to cure man's loneliness. And amazingly, Many women have been willing to accept their place of subordination as God's will. Perhaps it is time for everyone who attempts to interpret the creation stories to acknowledge that gender hierarchy cannot be extracted from the Genesis text unless it is first smuggled into the text. Mm-hmm.